Greetings everyone and welcome back to the channel and I hope you are all happy and healthy out there in collecting land. And today is the second part of our three reviews where we were taking a deep dive into the trio of figures produced by Asmus Toys from the 2015 Quentin Tarantino directed Western The Hateful Eight. Today it's the turn of John the Hangman Ruth aka Kurt Russell. Uh, there'll be a link to the recently reviewed Major Marquis Warren, aka Samuel L. Jackson, at the end of the video. And we'll be wrapping the whole trio off with uh, Daisy, Go Daisy Domagru, aka Jennifer Jason Lee, very, very soon as well. So uh, the review will take the usual format, quick look at the box, down onto the table for a look at all the accessories, then out with the hangman himself, onto the stand, onto the turntable for an up-close look, and then we'll be wrapping the whole thing up with the usual showcase at the end. But before we get into it, I'd just like to wander off topic a little bit, if I may. Now, regulars to my channel may have noticed that there hasn't been quite as much content going up in the past week or two. A couple of reasons for that. The first reason being I hadn't been too well uh, recently, so I had to take my foot off the gas, so to speak, uh, regarding the channel. As you know, producing YouTube videos can be tiring and lengthy process, and I'm no spring chicken at the end of the day, so I needed to take a bit of downtime. But rest assured, normal service will resume shortly. Uh, uh, the second reason is uh, I've had to focus my efforts on a major problem that arose uh, around music copyright issues on the channel. Now, uh, viewers of Dean Knight's channel will know that he is currently going through something similar. Uh, and if you haven't already, please show him some support uh, as the task he faces is a mammoth one. Uh, so in a nutshell, what I'm having to do is go back and re-edit uh, and rescore pretty much all of the content on the channel. Uh, admittedly, I was very naive when the channel first started regarding what's acceptable and what isn't. Uh, and made the mistake of looking at other content creators' work to inform my choices when I should have been doing my own research um, into copyright. But uh, as for that, I hold my hands up. Uh, but the upshot of this is I've had to focus a lot of my efforts on getting all my videos in line with the new YouTube, uh, the new YouTube uh, copyright policy. And believe me, that is no small task, I have to say. Uh, and it's still a work in progress. Um, I'd like to apologise to any new subscribers uh, or people visiting my older content on the channel for what might appear to be poor audio editing, incongruous music and even portions of videos that have had to be removed completely. Um, but it's the only workaround I could come up with until the reviews can be reshot in their entirety. Uh, I really hope that it doesn't put, uh, put people off, uh, uh, current and potential new subscribers out there. Uh, in fact, it's probably a good thing, uh, as revisiting some of my older content makes me realise just how rough around the edges <laughs> some of the earlier work was. Uh, so, please, uh, your patience is appreciated through this whole crazy process uh, and as always a massive thank you to everyone uh, for supporting the channel and uh, one, as always if you haven't already please like comment and subscribe uh, and finally a, a word of advice to anyone making content or thinking of starting their own channel uh, I would say only use YouTube approved music from the YouTube creator studio and follow the creditor instructions as well even if you, your music source says it's copyright free, that might change. And the last thing you need is to find out all your content has infringed copyright. Trust me, it will ruin all your Sundays. So uh, I'll get off the soapbox and let's have a look at the art box. Uh, now, this art box is very, very similar to the uh, Marquis Warren uh, figure that we looked at recently. Uh, exactly the same design. Uh, there's only a few minor differences, but we'll have a quick look at it anyway. What you've got, oh, if we can uh, get this turntable to stop spinning, uh, what you've got on the front here, uh, same design as before, you've got this white snowscape uh, in the background, which is really nice. It's got this clean look. I really do like these boxes from Asmus uh, in this line. It says the uh, eighth film by Quentin Tarantino across the top. You've got these eight red lines, and uh, as you saw before in the previous box, they are blacked out uh, as each, for each individual character. Just a pity they didn't do all eight of them, really. In the middle here, says John Ruth, the hangman. Uh, you've got a shot of the what looks like the actor himself. I don't believe that's the figure. Uh, you've got Kurt Russell there, front and centre. Bottom left-hand corner, it says the Hateful Eight. At the bottom here, we've got one six collectible action figure, uh, Ultra Pan Panavision 70, uh, as I mentioned in the previous review. That's the film stock that Tarantino insisted on to give it that 
epic 60s, 70s style uh, movie feel. Uh, some very old film stock there. I think he actually had to have some specifically made, which wasn't, uh, wasn't an easy job. Uh, and finding the cameras, I think there was only one or two working um, uh, uh, Ultra Panavision 70 cameras in the world. So, yeah, but you know what he's like, he's a stickler for his uh, details there. So, yeah, I, I'm wandering off there. Asmus Toys logo in the bottom right hand corner. We'll bring it round. Uh, on the side here, it just says uh, the Hateful Eight in this uh, nice embossed black lettering and a continuation of that snowscape. Around this side, the same thing. Uh, on the top, you have this blood spatter effect and it says the Hateful Eight. Uh, on the bottom, just says Choking Hazard and there's a barcode. Uh, and finally, on the back, what we've got is the same as the Marquis Warren. You've got the uh, picture of the stagecoach, a shot from the film itself, uh, making its way through the snow. Uh, you've got all the usual uh, warnings and credits on the back here. Don't piss this figure off or it may kick you down the stairs and say it was an accident. Uh, down at the bottom here, you've got Restricted, Ultra Panavision again, and really that's it. Uh, it's a slipcover design. We'll just take this slipcover off. Obviously, this isn't a new figure to me. Uh, I've had it in the collection a while, so there is no figure behind that clear plastic window there. But uh, yeah, relatively simple underneath. John Ruth the Hangman again. Blood spatter effects all around the bottom. Hateful Eight on either side. Uh, and uh, around the back, uh, you've got a, a, a section of... Uh, Minis Haberdashery. Now, I, I think I mentioned this in the previous review. Um, Asmus Toys did a really, really nice uh, uh, diorama uh, of Minis Haberdashery for all three figures. It's been on my radar for a long, long time, but I, I'll be damned if I can find one out there in the wild. If anybody knows, uh, <laughs> if there's one lurking somewhere in a corner, please let me know. Get in touch. It's something I've been after for a long, long time. But this sort of can act as a replacement and printed on the back of all three figures there's a separate shot of Minnie's haberdashery so you can line them up and use it as a as a background diorama as well so yeah there you have it that's the box very nice indeed relatively simple but very effective so without further ado let's dive down onto the table and take a look at all the accessories that come with the hangman okay so here we are down on the table with all the accessories that come with your john ruth figure um, we will start with the hands as we always do. Uh, there's a pair on the figure already. That's an ungloved pair. So you've got five ungloved hands, six gloved hands. Uh, let's uh, dive in and take a look at uh, a couple of them at random. You've got all manner of things from fisted hands to uh, gun holding hands to gripping hands. Uh, but we'll, we'll grab, as I say, we'll grab a couple at, uh, at random here. We'll take one of these ungloved hands and, uh, and have a close up look at it. Uh, and now, I'm not sure if the camera's picking this up, but the, the detailing here is really, really good. The sculpt is, is excellent, as is the, uh, as are the paint applications here. Um, what you've got are, uh, are, are some really sort of uh, blued up veins here on the back of the hands. The skin is suitably aged, uh, as are the fingers themselves. There's reddening on the knuckles here. The paint applications are really nice. Uh, you've got fingernails on here as well. There's lots of creasing in the palm there to sort of denote the age uh, of, Kurt, of Kurt Russell at the time he, he played the character. Yeah, these are particularly well done hands. I'm really liking these. Uh, obviously, this isn't an, a, a new figure to me. It's been in the collection a while. We'll get that out of the way. But uh, yeah, I'm still look, getting up close with these hands. I still really, really am impressed with the uh, quality of the sculpt here from Asmus Toys and the fact that they've gone to the trouble of, uh, of, of aging these hands in the sculpt and then, uh, and then aging them even more with the uh, paint applications. Flexibility is a uh, soft to medium, which is always a, a, a hit on my list. Uh, because uh, I, I prefer hands that are slightly more flexible for uh, gripping uh, gripping the accessories. So yeah, that's uh, one of the uh, more relaxed hands. Let's take a quick look at uh, one of the uh, fisted hands. Oh, I think this is actually a... Uh, ah, this is the hand for holding the cup, I think, this one. But yeah, it's the same story here. The same uh, high level of paint applications, high level of scum. There's even a, uh, almost what looked like liver spots on the back there as well. So yeah... Uh, Although the, uh, there is a little bit of excess plastic on the uh, on the edge of the head that's come out of the mould. But on the whole, yeah, the ungloved hands uh, are really, really nice. Let's take a look at one of the gloved ones. Uh, these are relatively simplistic, uh, but uh, sculpted well. Uh, there is creasing in there. Uh, the ends aren't perfectly round. They've got that sort of square tip to the fingers there, which gives that impression of a, of a black leather glove. 
there are sculpted in seams. The paint applications are good to uh, uh, to, to sort of uh, recreate that leather look. And there's some uh, this what looks like dry brushing on there as well to give it that weathered look as well. So yeah, on the whole, uh, very very good. And the same flexibility as the ungloved hands. So yeah, you've got open palm hands, uh, gloved hands, uh, gun holding hands. Yeah, a whole variety here. Uh, uh, nice to see Asmus Toys doing so many hands as well. So yeah, that's the hands and uh, we're off to a good start, I think, uh, with those hands. So we'll put those to one side. Uh, what next? Uh, comes with an instruction sheet, as do all three figures. Uh, relatively straightforward. This is for constructing the, uh, the base, uh, the stand itself, and uh, just general uh, information on how to uh, ensure you don't damage anything when uh, putting the guns into the hands. So yeah, nice to see, and nice inclusion. So that's the, uh, the instructions. Let's have a look at the weapons. Now, uh, John Roos comes with two weapons. He comes with his rifle. Um, this is all one piece of sculpted plastic, and I think they've done quite a nice job here. Uh, the barrel itself is hexagonal and has painted that gunmetal grey. You've got this sort of uh, what looks like brass detailing here with a, a, almost a gold effect paint. There's some nice paint washes on the stock here uh, to give it that wood effect and that, uh, that brass stroke gold uh, section of the hilt is nicely done. Perhaps not quite as weathered as it could be, but it looks a bit new. But uh, overall, screen accuracy is there. Uh, and uh, the, the sculpt is pretty good. There's no revolving barrel here, uh, re revolving uh, chamber rather, although there is a cocking action on this rifle, which is nice to see. Uh, not quite sure why that's there. I don't, I'm not one for, uh, uh, for, for going that, 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 that into that much detail uh, with, uh, with the cocking of weapons, but you know, it's there. Uh, and overall, yeah, pretty nice sculpt uh, and pretty nice paint application. So that's the rifle. Uh, also comes with a, a revolver, um, relatively simple as well. You've got this uh, gunmetal paint application on the uh, uh, on the body of the gun. Uh, once again, no revolving uh, chamber, no cocking action here. Uh, some it doesn't look like there's an awful lot of uh, weathering on it, although there are some there is some slight dry brushing to give it that weathered look. But uh, yeah, on the whole, uh, a nice example of a revolver. So yeah, we'll put that to one side. What else do you get? Well, take a quick look at this now, uh, th th this hat accessory. And this is uh, one of my biggest bugbears with this figure. We'll get to why that is when we bring the figure out itself and put it on. But yeah, this is meant to replicate the, uh, the fur hat that, uh, that John Ruth wears. Now, what this looks and feels like is uh, a piece of quite cheap toweling material. Um, and, yeah, that's been sewn together uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, as it stands here, I suppose it, 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 it might look like it's quite convincing, but we'll, uh, we'll see how it looks on the figure when it comes out. It's not the highest quality of uh, material here, although the stitch work's quite good. Uh, yeah, it looks like what it is, uh, a cheap towel, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that when we bring the figure out, as I said. Uh, what else do you get? Oh yeah, we've already talked about the hands. You get two spare wrist pegs, uh, always good to see. Uh, let's take a look at these two pieces. Now you also get the uh, the coffee cup uh, and the coffee pot as well. Now this is really nicely done. I do like this. Uh, once again, all uh, one piece of sculpted plastic. Um, yeah, it's got multiple paint applications on there. You've got this blue paint, but then it's got these uh, uh, these silver uh, the silver brushing on here to uh, to make it look aged and weathered around the spout. It's really been dirtied up nicely. Uh, with the uh, with the paint applications and the uh, and the silver to give it that uh, worn and rusted look. Also, this has got a hole in the bottom of it. Now, mentioned this in the uh, uh, in, in the Marcus Warren review uh, because he came with a chest and a barrel, and they both had holes in the bottom of them as well. Now, I am assuming um, that these pieces were intended to. To, to fit in place in the uh, diorama display base that Asmus Toys produced. Uh, although I'm not 100% certain, but if, uh, as I mentioned before, if anybody out there knows why these holes are there, I'd be fascinated to find out. I'm, I'm fascinated to find out whether my assumption is correct, but yeah. Uh, this, uh, this coffee pot, really, really nicely done. The, uh, the handle on the top is, uh, is, it's actually got a metal section here on, on the top. Uh, uh, the handle itself is plastic. Uh, the body of the handle is metal, uh, but yeah, all the way around, nice paint applications, nice sculpt, uh, and very, very convincing. Uh, so we'll put that to one side. Also a coffee cup. 
this has got uh, the same level of sculpting applications as the uh, and paint applications as the coffee pot. Looks nicely worn. It's got uh, uh, silver. It's a silver paint application on there, which has then been dirtied up and weathered, and it's got black and brown marks on the bottom, and it's just scuffed and dirty and uh, and authentic. Uh, so yeah, that's your coffee cup. What else do you get? Oh yeah, where would he be without his handcuffs uh, for? chaining himself to Daisy. Um, now these are all metal, which is nice to see in a third party figure. Oh, it's not a third party figure. I retract that statement. My apologies to Asmus Toys. This is a fully licensed figure. But yeah, we've got a metal uh, metal set of handcuffs here. They don't work, they're not functioning. Uh, if you're wanting to use them, if you have all three figures or if you're just wanting them to hang off uh, the arm of one of the figures, it's just simply a case of popping the hand off, uh, slipping it over the, uh, the arm and putting the, uh, the hand back on. But uh, yeah, uh, some nice paint applications on there, some silver paint applications to weather it. The chain's been weathered as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, nice to see uh, metal being used in a licensed figure. I'll get that back in there. <laughs> right, we'll put those to one side. Uh, and finally, the two bases. Now, uh, those who've seen the uh, Marcus Warren review will know that uh, all three of these figures come with, uh, with two bases. First of all, you get the uh, sort of I'll call it the standard uh, Hateful Eight base. It's a very, very simple base. This is just one piece of plastic, no feet on it or anything like that. Um, uh, it's uh, all done in plastic, as I mentioned. Across the front here, you've got the Hateful Eight in this uh, silver lettering, um, one six uh, collectible action figure, uh, and uh, relatively straightforward. And comes with a standard issue crotch grabber, which simply slots in place there. You also get this uh, second uh, stand as well. Now this is my preferred stand. Uh, I use this for all three figures. Once again, uh, one piece of sculpted plastic. You've got the uh, uh, four uh, uh, foam feet on the bottom there to, to prevent it from sliding around. You've got this rather nice uh, detailing on the edge here uh, and on the top you have a sticker um, which uh, replicates the wooden floor of Midi's haberdashery. Uh, relatively right, light, hollow inside, but uh, quite effective. Uh, and also as well, comes with a uh, standard issue crotch grabber too. So uh, there you have it. That Those are your two stands. So that's everything. So without further ado, let's bring out the hangman himself, get him onto one of the stands, onto the turntable, and take an up-close look at him. Okay, so here he is. It's John Ruth, the hangman himself, onto the stand, onto the turntable, and... First impressions, well, as always, I can't really give first impressions on this figure simply because I've had it in the collection quite a while. But as always, I can give second or third or fourth impressions. And uh, yeah, um, from the get-go, uh, when I first picked this figure up, I, I was very, very impressed. The proportions look great. The outfit looks screen accurate. Um, the whole thing works really, really well. Um, the uh, the materials that have been used look very good. Uh, as I mentioned, screen accuracy seems to be on point. Um, the head sculpt looks um, okay. We'll come to that. Uh, but yeah, overall, the overall imp first impressions, second, third impressions uh, are still very, very good for this figure. So we'll do as we always do. We will have an up close look at him. We'll stop him from spinning. Uh, we'll get him off the stand and start at the bottom and work our way up. But yeah, uh, quite 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 impressive uh, uh, st straight off the bat. But uh, let's get him off this stand and uh, have a look at some of the details here. What are we looking at? So we'll start at the bottom, as, I, as like I say, as we always do. Now these boots are very very similar to the uh, Marquis Warren boots, um, as, in as much as there's no. Uh, there's no articulation in these ankles. They are all one piece of uh, solid plastic, which I'm assuming has just been stuck straight onto the leg. So there's no give there at all. Uh, although the actual paint applications and sculpt are quite nice. Uh, you've got uh, um, yeah, you've, you've got some creasing in there to give it that sort of a brown leather look. Uh, not much going on on the uh, on the soles here, although there is some weathering. The camera's catching that in this light. Um, yeah, the uh, the paint applications are good. Uh, there's some dry brushing there in the crevices to give it that wet, to give them that weathered look. Uh, and overall, uh, obviously you're going to you're going to be limited with the articulation on on this simply because the feet don't move. But the actual boots themselves, overall, are really well done. Um, the uh, knees have got a, uh, a double joint there at the knees, so there's some give there. Although I wouldn't put too much strain on this figure simply because uh, uh, the way these pants have been cut, there's no real play in those, in those knees. Uh, 
The uh, pants themselves are a really nice cotton material. The stitch work is very well done, uh, especially in the seam areas there. And as I always mention, you're probably sick of me droning on about this, but uh, I, uh, I'm a stickler for the, uh, the accuracy of six scale stitch work simply because it throws off the proportions and it can, it can throw a really good figure completely off just by, uh, uh, just by not getting the scaling right on that stitch work. But yeah, working, we'll lift his arms up. Let's work our way up now. Uh, around the waist there, uh, you've got a belt and, and very nicely done it is too. Now I'm not 100% certain that this isn't, isn't actually real leather. Um, it feels like leather. Um, it could very well be leather, um, possibly pleather though. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna remain on the fence on that one. The fact that this belt is still intact, because uh, these uh, aren't, the, uh, aren't the youngest of figures, uh, suggest maybe it isn't pleather, but uh, if anyone knows out there, please drop a comment in the comment section below. I'd be fascinated to know what this uh, what this belt's made out of. But yeah, really well done. You've got a plastic buckle there. Um, there are sculpted in uh, bullets. If the camera's catching this, I think I'm throwing it out of focus with my sausage fingers. Uh, but yeah, uh, they're not removable these bullets, but they're they're nicely done and nicely painted. Uh, you've got these tassels on the belt. There's some more uh, sculpted in bullets around here. Uh, and uh, obviously the, uh, the cross holster there uh, that, uh, that you can put the gun in fits quite snugly in there. Uh, moving up, you've got this really nicely tailored uh, waistcoat here, which has got uh, snaps in it rather than uh, six scale buttons. Um, uh, the, uh, the material they've used here in this waistcoat is a very, very nice quality. And it's, uh, it's this sort of uh, blue pinstripe, which, I, which is screen accurate as far as I can tell. Uh, the uh, the stitch work is really really good. Um, overall, the quality of materials used in the outfit on on this particular figure are very very good indeed. Um, the, there's even a pocket watch here. I shall attempt to remove this. Uh, it's uh, similar to the uh, the Marquis uh, Warren figure, which also comes with its own pocket watch. But yeah, this is uh, um, this feels like it's metal. Uh, in fact, I, I, I would, I'm going to chance my arm and say that is actually metal, that pocket watch, because it's cold to the touch. Uh, it's got this nice gold paint application. The detailing on the face of that watch is very, very nice indeed. It's, they've even weathered the glass to give it that old look. But yeah, and that, that simply slips in to the waistcoat pocket there. Underneath the waistcoat, you have this uh, cotton collarless shirt. Once again, that's fastened with uh, snaps, if I can get that into shot. I was drifting off there. Um, but yeah, nice stitch work on the on the collar area there, and uh, it's got those snaps on it as well. Once again, screen accurate. Uh, it was the collarless shirt that he wore in the film. Over the top of all that, you have the jacket. Now, the jacket uh, is a darker material. It's almost a black. Uh, it's not quite the same shade as the uh, 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 as the pants themselves, which are a brown shade. Now. This jacket, I think under this lighting is coming off as a bit blue, but it isn't, trust me, it is uh, it is actually black. Uh, it's got functioning pockets. Oh, call me a liar. No, it doesn't have functioning pockets, no. Uh, but it has pockets sewn in there. So that's very, very nice. Uh, over, like, I, like I said, overall, the uh, uh, the quality of the, uh, uh, of the tailoring on this outfit is very, very good. And then you get to his uh, sort of uh, trademark fur coat. Now, obviously this is a faux fur, it's lined. It's got this uh, sort of, uh, feels like a nylon lining. Um, then up the side here, you've got what feels like pleather straps, these, these pleather ties, which go all the way uh, up, up to the top here, which is sewn in to the, uh, to, to almost to the hem of this fur coat. And this fur coat is just done really, really well. Looks screen accurate. You've got these large buttons sewn in on this side. I believe these are plastic, but I could be wrong. They, they actually feel like they're, they're, they may be wood, uh, but I'm, yeah, there may be some form of wood there, but they're actually, they're sewn in rather than being stuck on, which is nice to see. Uh, it just feels right and it falls well, this coat, and it looks very, very screen accurate. You've got this uh, contrasting fur collar up the top, which you can turn up or turn down, depending on uh, the look that you want to go for. And it's got that sort of, how can I describe it? That sort of thick broadness in the shoulders that gives him also that bear-like quality, which is what he had in the film when he had this coat on. It, it just hangs really, really well. Uh, and it's got the uh, these sewn-in cuffs as well. Uh, and just overall, yeah, great proportions, great, uh, great quality, uh, and, and just very, very well put together and, uh, and, and stitched well as well, if that makes sense. 
So yeah, that's the outfit. So on to the head sculpt. Yeah, all right, let's get this in shot. Uh, now, where to begin with this head sculpt? I, I have a, a love-hate relationship with this particular head sculpt. There are times when I, when I catch it at certain angles and I go, yeah, that's absolutely Kurt Russell. Uh, and then other times when I catch it at another angle and go, no, it's nowhere near him. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll soldier on. Uh, it's one fixed neck head sculpt here. Uh, and it's nice to see, the camera can see under there, that they've, uh, uh, they've aged the neck area here. And there's sort of that, that, those flaps of skin hanging down a little bit. They've caught the age absolutely brilliantly. Um, the, the, the quality of the sculpt uh, is good, but uh, is, it, is it accurate? No. Is it 100% Kurt Russell? No. Um, the paint applications are very nice. The, uh, uh, the, the greys and the whites in this enormous moustache uh, uh, that he's got that goes into these sideburns and chin beard are painted really, really well. You've got whites and greys in there. And, there's a, and it's graded into the side of his, uh, his cheeks there, which is really nice to see. The, uh, the hair on top of the head, we'll just bring this into shot now. Not the best sculpt I've seen, um, and probably not the, the best paint applications I've ever seen. It's good, it's good. I mean, there, there are different uh, colors in there. There's even a hint of brown, there are whites, there are grays, uh, but overall not bad. And it's, it's the correct style and it falls nicely at the back there. The camera can catch that. Uh, so it's the right length, it's the right style. Uh, perhaps the sculpting is a little soft on the hair, but overall some very, very nice detailing. And the paint applications on the face are nice as well. You've got the furrows in the eyebrows, the furrows over the nose. The eyebrows themselves are done, uh, are done well. The eyes are nice and glassy and the right colour. Uh, and just overall the ageing of that skin uh, is, uh, is well done in the paint applications. The, the only thing is, is that head sculpt Kurt Russell. Now, no, I'm going to say no, and I'm not sure what it is, to be 100% honest with you. Is it the eyes? Um, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but yeah, there, there is something off. Uh, it's not 100%. Um, I would say, I, if I was scoring that head sculpt out of 10, I'd probably have to give it a 7, maybe a 7.5, uh, maybe even an 8 on a good day. Somewhere between a 7 and an 8, but yeah, um, the, the, it, it's good, and it's most certainly uh, unmistakably in fact uh, John Ruth from uh, uh, The Hateful Eight but is it absolutely Kurt Russell? No. But um, I still think it's uh, uh, it's a good attempt shall we say. And we've got to remember these are these are quite old figures they've been around a while uh, and head sculpting technology has come on in leaps and bounds but still yeah uh, um, I, I that that angle there <laughs> that, that to me is uh, almost the best angle uh, to get that likeness of Kurt Russell, but you know, you can and maybe there as well, but then certain other angles it doesn't quite work, but yeah. So there you have it. That is John the Hangman Ruth. We'll get him back on his stand uh, and we'll uh, have some final thoughts on this guy. Uh, oh, yeah, before we do actually, I think uh, <laughs> uh, let, let's uh, let's bring in the uh, the nemesis uh, that we talked about in the accessories section. Uh, it's this hat. Let's pop this hat on him and you'll see what I mean. Um, now, there you go. Now that is not the most convincing thing in the world. Um, it uh, unfortunately looks like what it is. It looks like he's got a cheap towel on his head, uh, which is a real shame because um, um, when we review the Daisy Domagrew figure, uh, you'll see that uh, the, the hat that they gave her is really, really well done. It's um, meant to be obviously a, a skin hat, a fur hat rather. Uh, and they've done that really, really well. And if you take that hat off uh, the Daisy figure and put it on here, it looks fantastic. Why they didn't choose to just repeat that um, and, and, and include the same, um, the, the same fur hat with both figures, I don't know. But yeah, this really does, for me, let it down a little bit. So I don't, I don't use this in the display, you know, unless I want him to look like he's just come out of the shower. Uh, so yeah, we'll put that to one side, but overall, I think this is a really, really good figure. It's a really strong figure. Um, I think the likeness to uh, Kurt Russell is not 100% on, but what is 100% on is the screen accuracy and, and just the quality of the uh, tailoring in this outfit. Um, 
yeah, I, I just really, really think Asmus Toys did a cracking job there with the, uh, most certainly with the uh, with the outfit and the screen accuracy, as I say. So that's enough of my rambling. A score. Um, difficult, this one. Uh, I would say, had that head sculpt been stronger, this would have got a nine. Um, it, it really would. But I think we're going to have to bring it down uh, to an eight. And it's the head sculpt. It, it really is. It's the head sculpt and this hat. That, that let it down, unfortunately. I think of the three figures in this trio, uh, I think this is the weaker of the head sculpt. And that's just my opinion. Uh, I know there are going to be people out there who completely disagree with me and think that this head sculpt is absolutely spot on. It is, uh, at the end of the day, this is a subjective thing. It's a personal thing. Uh, but yeah, m my personal favorite of the three figures is Daisy. Uh, but still a strong figure nonetheless. So there you have it. That is John the Hangman Ruth. So what, what's your take on this figure? What are your thoughts? I would be fascinated to hear. Please drop a comment in the comment section below. Um, what's your take on that head sculpt? Uh, that would be really interesting to hear about. Uh, uh, and, and what are your thoughts on uh, what we've seen so far of the trio? Um, is it something that, uh, that you have in your collection? Uh, so yeah, please drop a comment in the comment section below. I uh, suppose all that remains for me to say uh, is, well, hang on, hang on a second, slow those horses down, James. What we want to, <laughs> what we want to be looking at now is what's coming up next. Uh, okay, caustic plastic in the 1-6 scale world. Um, their Horror of Dracula double set has just dropped. Uh, I believe the inf influencers have got their, uh, their first copies, so hopefully it won't be too long before ours will be arriving, so that'll be going in front of the camera. We've got the HH model Achilles. Uh, that's already in. We're going to be taking a look at that uh, uh, probably at the weekend. Um, VTS Toys, Cloud Strife, the deluxe edition from uh, Final Fantasy. That's on its way to us. Org Toys, Duke Leto uh, from June, another one uh, that's coming in soon. Premier Toys, Interstellar figures when they are released. Fingers crossed that'll be soon. Obviously, the Inar Batman. We've got uh, Blitzway Astro Boy on its way to us as well. As you can probably tell, there is a raft of stuff. That's just the tip of the iceberg. We've also got uh, one twelfth scale reviews coming up, a lot of NECA stuff. We've got quarter scale statues as well. So please hit that like button, hit that uh, bell notification icon, hit that subscribe button. For those of you who are watching the channel and not subscribing, please make an old man happy and turn your uh, view into a subscribe. Uh, and I suppose uh, until next time, take care of yourselves. Happy collecting, and it's over to the showcase.